everyone. For today's how-to video, I'll be going over a few ways you can add reflections to your images. This can add a bit more depth and realism to any work that has reflective surfaces, like metal, water, or even sunglasses. To start with, in terms of art, and at its most simple, a reflection is just an image put onto a surface with a low opacity. Fitting and blending the image around your surface is what will determine how believable the end result looks. So how do you actually get the reflection into your image? Well, the first step in the process is getting or taking the photos you want to use for your scene and for your reflection. Again, this will depend on how complex you want to make it. If you have someone wearing sunglasses and you want to reflect them talking to another person across from them, you'll have to pay attention to a lot less of the image around the model than if, for instance, you wanted those sunglasses to reflect the falling sky, which would affect the entire scene's coloring and shading. Depending on how big the reflected subject is, you'll have more objects to worry about blending the reflection into. Once you have your subjects and reflection graphics done, then you move on to actually putting them together. So first you need to pick which surfaces you want the reflections on. For my example, I've kept things simple and I'm using a woman's steampunk goggles. Regardless of what the surface is, we'll be using masking to get the reflections in there. A clipping mask, as I've gone over in my how-to on text masks, is one or more images which are only visible inside the layer they're clipped to. To make a clipping mask, you first need your control layer. In my case, I selected the lenses of the model's glasses and duplicated them onto their own layer. You would do this for any surfaces you want to use. With the layer made, we select all the layers we want inside the mask, which will be our reflection, and move them so that they're directly over the control layer in the stack. Then, with all of those layers selected, hold down Command Option G on a Mac or Control Alt G on a PC. Alternatively, you can hold down Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC and click on the line between your layers, though if you're using multiple layers to clip, this will take longer. Now, all the content will be hidden wherever there's transparency in that control layer, and on the other hand, anything in that control layer that has pixels will show the content for all of your clipped layers. You can, from there, move, scale, and otherwise edit the contents inside of this mask, or move the mask layer around without having to worry about lining things back up inside of the mask, which you should do if you're going for a realistic effect, unless both your subject and reflection are in a completely straight on frontal view. This is a good way to do things for mirrors, windows, and other flat surfaces. Once you have the reflection graphics placed, it's time to add a bit more depth to the whole thing. From there, you work with the opacity and blending modes of your layers to try for different final results. In the same vein, you can add a color fill layer into the top of your clip layers and drop the opacity for a tinted effect on the glass or metal. So that's all great for flat surfaces, but what if I wanted to do something more in motion, like say, adding a castle into a waterscape. The general idea is the same as with flat surfaces. You make your images and you place them together. Where water differs is when you get waves and ripples in the surface. Depending on how active the water is, you'll want to do warp and puppet warp transformations around the waves so it looks like it's actually part of the scene. Once you have it placed, you'll want to do even more blending from there after these transformations. As a last note, there are some special things to pay attention to when it comes to mirrors and other reflections like this. The first tip, and something that could be easily overlooked, is that mirrors are the opposite of your subject. What that means means is that you need to keep in mind what your subject is and how they're facing. If you are using a shot of someone from the back, their reflection should be the front or vice versa. This is something you can fake as long as you have the same subject for multiple angles or have similar looking models. If you have a side view of your subject and the mirror, you should horizontally flip the reflection. For added depth, you can also add shading and tinting to the surface with your reflection to separate the subjects a bit more. Though I'm saying you should do these, keep in mind they're just guidelines and they're guidelines for realism at that. If you're going for something more psychedelic, fantastical, and bizarre, these things may not apply. And that was today's how-to. Hopefully you learned something and enjoyed yourself doing it. I'm gonna give this whole actually recording myself a bit of a trial run because so far I've really been enjoying it. Uh, feel free to comment below, like the video, or subscribe to my channel for more awesome content. Have a great day, everyone.